In this video, I'm going to share my opinions on diet and multiple sclerosis. If you'd like an update on my thoughts here in early 2020, don't turn away because it starts right now. Hey! Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today, I wanted to share with you my evolving opinions related to diet, nutrition, and multiple sclerosis. It's a very, very hot topic, and there's a tremendous amount out there, although a lot of it uh, is lacking in supportive data. And it can leave a person impacted by MS, whether that be a patient or a care partner or even a doctor, a little bit befuddled. Now, I have a playlist on my channel with several videos on MS and nutrition, so I'll certainly throw a link up above in case you wanted to check that out. But I wanted to give you an update of where my thoughts are in early 2020 as it relates to diet and nutrition. Back in the day when I was being trained, we really didn't spend much time thinking about what patients ate. Uh, we didn't spend much energy at all. We would sometimes recommend a multivitamin or supplement someone's low level of vitamin D, but that was really kind of it. And over the subsequent decade and a half, I've really started to pay increasing attention to what diet can and can't do to help someone impacted by MS. Now, in 2020, there is no diet that has been proven to slow disease progression. And I just want to put that out there. That's a fact. But I really do believe that you can impact MS symptoms, the intensity of symptoms, significantly by changing your diet, which is good stuff. Anecdotally, having spent quite some time talking to families with MS in clinic, I can tell you that when people embrace certain lifestyle changes, including changes to their diet, not only do they lose weight, have more energy, move around more easily, have less depression, but overall their sense of well-being increases. And I think that's awesome. So let me share with you some of these thoughts. I'm not giving you medical advice. I'm not about to tell you the MS diet that you're supposed to do. I'm simply sharing my opinions and where my thoughts are as it relates to diets. Number one is I think that we should avoid fads. Fads are things that are popular for a short period of time and then they fall out of popularity. Like in the 90s when we would pop our collars or duck the bottom of our jeans. That was a fad. And I don't really think fad diets are it because we want to make a change which is sustainable, something that you can do forever. And if you're adhering to a really rigorous diet, it might be impossible to maintain that. And there's a risk that when you stop that rigorous diet, you fall back to whatever poor patterns you might've had in the past. So when we're thinking about lifestyle type diets, I tend to think about things like uh, Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig, and I'm not sponsored by them. I just like their programs. Why do I like their programs? Again, because they're teaching you a lifestyle way of eating, a way of thinking about what you're eating. The Mediterranean diet was recently identified as being a really awesome diet, not just for cardiovascular health, but also for sustainability. And it also highlights eating real food, which is a thing that I'm really into. And so whatever diet you're considering, I think that we need to first think about, is this sustainable long-term? And if the answer is no, then I think that's a question mark. The second thing I think about is drinking water, and so many of us are dehydrated. I think that in order to be our best, we have to stay hydrated, and we red-blooded Americans in particular do just a really bad job of this. So my opinion is that if you drink one large glass of water with each of your three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you're off to a good start. I then challenge you to drink one glass of water between breakfast and lunch, and another glass of water between lunch and dinner. That's gonna give you five large glasses of water and that's the way to go. Now, if you're drinking a caffeinated beverage like a coffee or an alcoholic beverage like a beer, that's gonna dehydrate you and you may need to match it with a glass of water to stay euvolemic or you know, keep your fluid volumes okay. Those are my thoughts on water. Now, what about other things? I don't favor people living on soda or diet soda. And so I'm recommending that people shy away from those things. If you have a food or a beverage and it's got a bunch of uh, ingredients, words that you can't pronounce, that's not food, those are chemicals. And taking it from a guy that used to live off of Diet 7-Up, I, I shudder when I think about what I used to do, I'm so much better off drinking water or carbonated water. So that's kind of where I weigh in. As it relates specifically to alcohol, um, I have a couple videos I've done on alcohol and MS and you can check those out, but I really think it's all about moderation. 
a healthy gentleman can metabolize two alcoholic beverages a night and a healthy lady can metabolize one alcoholic beverage. We do of course have to consider the fact that it can have an impact on neurological function like balance and thinking and memory and it might interact with some of the medicines that we're on. So we have to think about alcohol in, in that context. Moving on to actual foods. I have a really hard challenge for you and it's simple to say but hard to do and that's to eat real food. What do I mean by that? Guys, fast food is not real food. The food from fast food joints is laden with chemicals, heavily processed, it's got extra sugar added to it and it doesn't rot. A hamburger from a fast food joint will look the same three years later, which is frankly disgusting. And I challenge you not to live on fast food, that's not real food. I challenge you to avoid um, fried foods and overly processed foods, frozen foods, foods uh, laden with sugar. These are things that I think you should avoid. And if the food has words in it you can't pronounce, that's not food. So my first really big food challenge is to think critically about what it is you're choosing to eat. I've shared in other videos, I used to live off Diet 7-Up and protein bars and I realized after way too long that I wasn't eating actual food. Crazy, food should rot. So that's something that I want you guys to consider. Making these relatively simple changes, increasing your water intake, or as I like to say, upping your water game, and avoiding fake foods can have a tremendous impact on your quality of life and your energy levels. I've seen it time and time again in clinic, and I would love for you to experience that. In the comments section below, please tell me your thoughts. And if you've tried what I'm recommending, I would love to hear the results. If you are currently involved in another type of diet, whether it's found to be helpful or not, I would love to hear about it. So please leave those comments down in the section below and I look forward to reading them and to responding to them. My name's Aaron Boster and thank you for learning about MS with me. If you'd like to learn more about nutrition and MS, certainly check out this playlist right there. YouTube Analytics thinks that you would love this video right there, so you may wanna check that out as well. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Just click that circle with my face on it. Go ahead, click my face. Until my next video or my next live stream or the next time I see you in clinic, this is Aaron Boster saying take care.